Hey guys, welcome back to a new video in this Jetpack Compose playlist. I am in an empty Android Studio project here, in an empty Compose project in Canary Android Studio. So if you don't know how to set that up, then please watch the previous video in this playlist. Other than that, in this video I want to talk about rows and columns and a little bit about sizing, so just increasing the width and height of our rows and columns and our elements. But let's actually go one step at a time. What I want to show you first is um, in the last video you saw saw me how I made such a text here. Um, let's import that from this first one. Uh, last video you saw me using this text composable and writing something like hello here. But what actually happens now if we use another text down here? So let's write world. And if we launch this app and check our emulator, you can see Jetpack Compose places these texts on top of each other uh, by default. So that is important to know that it doesn't place them one on top, one on the bottom. It doesn't place them next to each other. It stacks them basically. And this is of course not what we want here. And the solution to this is either a row or a column. So there is a composable which is called column. We need to import that. We could specify some extra options here which we don't want yet. And then we just take these two texts and place these into that column. If we now relaunch that and check our emulator, then you will see now these items, these texts are displayed on top of each other because we chose a column based layout here. So these items are placed like that. So if we put in more items here in this column block, then these would just be placed below this world and so on and so forth. And you probably already guessed it what happens if we choose row instead of uh, column here. If we relaunch this now, then you'll see. Now a row will just place these texts next to each other. So if you come from uh, Android XML layouts, then what rows and columns here do is just the same as we could do with a linear layout in uh, XML. But in XML, we usually didn't use linear layout because um, with that, we needed to nest our layouts pretty deeply if we have a more complex layout. And we instead use constraint layout for that. But Jetpack Compose actually handles all this nesting of layouts much more efficiently. So here it is totally fine using rows and column based layouts. But there's a lot more cool stuff we can do with these rows and columns. Um, I'll swap this out for a column again, like this. And as you might have noticed already here, we can actually put in some extra options for that column. And that is what we want to do now. If we press Control P, um, that was Control O, Control P, um, we can see there's quite a lot of stuff we can put in here in these parentheses. What I'm interested now to show you is this vertical arrangement and horizontal alignment. Let's start with horizontal alignment. Uh, oops, this one. We can set this to alignment and you can see either center horizontally um, end or start. So let's set this to center horizontally. Here it's not important to understand the difference between alignment and arrangement. And for that we need to know that each column and each row has a main axis and a cross axis. So the main axis is always the axis in which new items are basically stacked. So if we take a look in our emulator, um, that is still a row here. For a row, the main axis is the horizontal axis because that's the direction in which we basically put in our items. And the cross axis for a row is the vertical axis because you can think of that like as if this row was a street and if you want to cross that street, then you would go that direction. And if you would drive that street, then you would go that direction. So driving on that street is, is the main axis and crossing the street is called the cross axis. And if we take a look at our column here, there our axes are basically swapped. So for a column, these texts are basically stacked on top of each other. 
So this one is on the top and this one is at the bottom. So in this case, the street would go from top to bottom because this is the direction in which our items are stacked. And the cross axis for a column would be the horizontal axis. So with horizontal alignment and vertical arrangement, we can just position these items and align these in our column or row. So if we would launch this app right now and take a look here in our emulator, then you will see nothing really changes. So why is that? The reason is that by default, Compose will make these columns and rows and any other composable only as wide and as high as it needs to be. And to actually visualize that a little bit easier, we can add what is called a modifier. I won't go deep into modifiers here in this video. This will be the topic of the next video, but it will help us to understand this alignment here and it will help us to size our, our containers, our columns and rows. Um, we can set the modifier here to modifier import that dot background. And with that, we can basically give our column a background color. We can choose color um, dot green, for example. Make sure to choose this green from Compose with a capital G and the rest in uh, lower letters, not this green here. And then put that into the next line. Rearrange this a little bit like this. So if we now relaunch the app and check the emulator, you will see our column now has a green background. And you will much better see now why our centering didn't work because it actually does center our items, but because our, our column, our box here is only as wide as this green color goes, we don't really see that these items are centered because they only take up as much width as they really need. So what we can do to fix this is we can go back to Android Studio and also use our modifier to actually give our, our column a width and a height value that we can choose so that it ignores the default behavior, that it only fills as much width and height as it needs and instead uses our height. So we simply write dot fill max size. And well, it actually already says what it does. It will fill all the space there is. So if we relaunch this now and check this emulator, you can now see, well, the column now fills our whole page because we set the modifier here to fill max size. And now because the, the whole page is of course wider than our texts are. These are actually centered horizontally because we set horizontal alignment to center. And as I already said, when there is horizontal alignment, we have a vertical arrangement. So that now arranges our items along this column's main axis, so in vertical direction. And here we don't set this to alignment dot something, instead we use arrangement dot something. And you can already see we have a lot more options here how we can actually arrange these items. For alignment we only had three so we could set these to the start so that would just put these to the left of our column. We could set these to the end that would set these well to the end to the right side of our column or what we chose was to center these. But for arrangement we have a lot more. Um, let's set these to bottom for example and relaunch our app and just see what happens. So check our emulator and well now you can see all of our items stick to the bottom because the arrangement is now for the column the the y-axis the the vertical axis so we now set that to bottom so all of our items will stick to the bottom. But as you saw, there are actually a lot more values we can choose from. Very interesting are these space around, space evenly and space between values um, because we didn't have these for alignment. Let's choose space between and relaunch the app. Then you can see now hello is on top of our page and world is on the bottom. So what space between does here is it will just push these items um, away from each other basically so there is the maximum available space between them. And I think to better show you that we can actually add another text here. 
Um, let's just write hello again. Relaunch the app. And then you can see that this middle text will now stick to the middle of our page and these other texts will stick to the top and the bottom so that there is the maximum available space between each item. Then what else do we have here? We have space evenly. Let's relaunch the app. Well, that will arrange these items like this. So what it will do is it will give each space between each item the same height in this case. So this is exactly as, as high as this, as high as this and this. So each space just fills the same height in this case. But then we also have space around which is similar to space evenly, just with a little difference. Let's launch our app here again, see what this does. You can see it looks similar as space evenly, but this space is actually not as high as this space. So what space around will do is it will just um, give each item the same space, but the two outer items um, only have half that space that is in between two different items. Um, so that might be a little bit confusing now. So this space here is exactly half as high as this space and as this space. So that is how these arrangements work basically. And of course if we would change this to a row now, so we have a row based layout, you can see it doesn't know these attributes because as I said for a row these two axes are swapped. So that means for a row what is the horizontal alignment for a column? For the row that is actually the horizontal arrangement because items are arranged horizontally in a row and what is for a column the vertical arrangement is for a row the vertical alignment. And we also need to swap these two values here so put the this one here and uh, this one here. And of course when we have a row we can center horizontally with the alignment value instead we need to swap this out for center vertically like this and if we now relaunch the app and see how that looks like then well now these are centered vertically because we set the horizontal arrangement to uh, of course the the vertical alignment to center vertically so these are vertically centered along the row's cross axis, so the vertical axis. And in horizontal direction we now have this space around value set. So it is actually the same as we had for the column, just that the space around now refers to the horizontal axis. So these are just super important to understand this arrangement and alignment because you will need these two all the time when creating layouts with Compose. As a last thing for this video, I want to show you a little bit more about the size modifiers we can choose from here. So right now we only chose um, fill max size, which will well fill all the size there is. But we can also set our own size or we could even set a fraction here. So as you can see, we can set a parameter here. By default that is set to 1, <clears throat> so it will fill 100%. But we could set this as well to 0.5f to just fill 50% of our screen. If we check back our emulator, then you can see it will now only fill 50% of our width and 50% of our height. And these things were actually really annoying to use when it came to XML layouts because to set percentage widths and percentage heights we basically needed to use a constraint layout with guidelines then set the guideline to that percentage and constrain the views to it. And here we can actually just use that with any view. And that is super cool in my opinion. But if you actually don't want to choose a fractional width and height here, then you can also remove this and just directly set the width or the height here. So let's say the width, the width is, let's import that, Alt Enter. Um, the width is some amount of dp units here, so here we can also just set this width to an amount of dp. For example, 200 dp, and we don't write dp directly afterwards as we did in XML, instead we write 200 dot dp. So dp is an extension here, and we simply import that. And then we could, for example, set the height to 
uh, let's say 300 dp. And if we now launch our app again, then you can see our container, our column, or rather row here, is exactly 200 dp wide, which is kind of the middle here. Um, if we set this to 300 to show you that better, then you will actually see that we can give our containers, our columns, our rows um, custom amounts of width and height. And if you, for example, would like to set the height to a fractional unit and the width to a dp unit, then you can also set the height here to fill max height. So we chose max size, which referred to both the width and the height. But we can also you know, use these individually. So we can set the width to 300 dp and we can then fill the max height and set this to a fraction of 0.7f, for example, to fill 70% of our screen height. Check back here and you will see this is exactly what it will do. So this green container is now 70% of our screen high and 300 dp wide. And that is actually everything I wanted to show you in this video. In the next video, we will dive deeper into these modifiers here because these have so many functions we can use to modify a composable. So this modifier can be applied to any composable. And yeah, there's just a lot more to explore than just this width, height, and fill max size functions and this background function, of course. So I hope you will keep watching this series. If you're looking for more advanced Android courses, check out the first link in this video's description, which will lead you to my website where you will find more advanced Android courses, which are premium, so paid, um, which is also a way how you can support me and my work. And this will help you to bring your Android skills to the next level. So I wish you an awesome day. See you in the next video. Bye bye.